In this video, we're going to be documenting the process of shifting the spindle assembly up in the XZ carriage. So you'll recall that uh, we ship the XZ carriage with the spindle assembly down. We do this for a couple of different reasons. Primarily, it is so that you can reach the base plate for the surfacing operation with a standard end mill or with your fly cutter. If you decide to put a finish pass on your base plate with the fly cutter. But most people, after they surface the base plate, are going to want to shift this up. It's two inches uh, to get the most clearance between the spindle nose to the base plate. By shifting this up, you increase that to um, 9.2 inches of spindle nose to table clearance, which is really handy for you know, working in vices, drilling, um, things of that nature. So you know, in our shop, for example, at least 95% of the work that we do on our, our MR1 machines here is with the spindle up. Aside from just having better clearance for work, uh, another advantage is that you're gonna have more rigidity um, in the up position, so you can take bigger cuts. It's better for cutting harder materials like stainless steel, titanium, and um, carbon steel. Um, with that being said, it's a really easy operation so to, to shift this down. So if you have a job that comes up where you've got to get down onto the base plate for something, um, it just takes a few minutes to uh, put the spindle back down in its low position. At that low position, you can get the spindle nose to less than an inch, within less than an inch of the base plate. Um, and you still have about 7.2 inches of clearance between the spindle nose and the table. So with that being said, I'm gonna go first go over the tools that are needed to, um, to shift the uh, spindle assembly up. So we're gonna need a couple of different Allen wrenches. We're gonna need a uh, 5 32nd Allen wrench, a 3 16 Allen wrench, an eighth inch Allen wrench, and then a quarter inch Allen wrench. And then we'll also need a uh, just a half inch uh, regular boxed end wrench. That being said, the first thing I'm gonna do, or we're gonna do is uh, pull the spindle cover off. To do that, I'm gonna remove these button head cap screws. There's two on each side. And I'm also gonna remove these uh, socket head cap screws. Um, and there's one on each side. Once I have these off, then the spindle cover can be uh, removed and, and kind of set over to the side and we'll be able to take a look at the spindle assembly and uh, the steps that we need to take from there. So with the cover off, the next step is to jog the z-axis all the way down up to the soft limit if you've got soft limits enabled or um, up against the lower hard stop if you don't have soft limits enabled. Once it's in the down position, there's some uh, hex head cap screws that secure the uh, spindle housing to the z-slide plate. Those are accessed from the back. Um, so we'll use our uh, half inch wrench to do that. Once I've got those bolts off, the spindle is going to be free to, be, to come off. Just make sure that you're you know, careful not to let it fall or drop. Um, you may consider you know, putting some foam or a box or something that you can then support the spindle on after you, um, after you take it off of the Z slide. Um, but with that being said, I'm just gonna go ahead and hold it after I get it off. So, uh, first step, I'm going to jog all the way down. Okay. I'm going to take my half inch wrench and loosen the bolts. There's one bolt. And after I start getting the second bolt loose, I'm gonna feel the spindle start to lean forward. So I'm just gonna start holding on to it. Now I've got both bolts out. Now the spindle can be pulled out. I'll just set it here. There's limited length on the um, stepper motor cable or on the um, spindle motor cable, so there's not a lot of room to play with. Like I was saying before, is if you have a box or something, you can set the spindle up right here. Um, it's not a bad idea to do that, so you can 
thoroughly clean these mating surfaces. But I'll just go ahead and explain how the spindle works and how it's assembled. So this is the spindle housing. Um, you'll notice that there's two sets of mounting holes that are tapped on the back. There's these ones and then there's these ones. And then there's two sets of keyways. The upper keyways are for when the uh, spindle is installed in the down position and the lower keyways are when the spindle is installed in the up position. Similarly, um, each set of hole corresponds to whether the spindle is installed in the upper or down position. So only one set of those holes is used at any given time. These upper holes, they're, they're through holes. Those holes are used when the spindle is installed in the up position only. Just adds extra um, securement to, between the spindle assembly and the Z slide just for a little bit better rigidity when it's in the up position. And if we take a look at the, the Z slide here, you'll notice that there's male keys here. Those engage the um, keyways on the spindle assembly. These are the holes, the through holes that we just pulled bolts out of. And then there's also these um, tapped holes. These are quarter 20 tapped holes. You'll notice that in your Z slide at home, there's already bolts that are pre-installed into those bolts. You're going to go ahead and remove them now, um, which I've already, I've already done previous to this video, but they're button head cap screws that are installed in um, those holes. We're going to go ahead and use those when we secure this uh, in the up position. So go ahead and hang on to those. Um, but the most important thing before we go ahead and reinstall this um, spindle assembly is this has to be perfectly clean. The keyways have to be clean. The face of the Z slide's got to be clean, and the back mating face on the spindle assembly has to be clean. So you're going to want to use compressed air or rags, um, lint-free rags preferably, to clean off all these surfaces, make it as clean as you can get it uh, before you go ahead and reinstall um, the spindle assembly. So I'm just going to go ahead and use a little bit of compressed air. to make sure there's no chips or dust or anything that could prevent uh, intimate contact in this interface. I like to just give it a little wipe with my hand just to make sure there's no dents or debris or anything like that that's gonna um, compromise the accuracy of the machine. So that feels good. So all I'm gonna do is pick this up and I'm gonna Get it in position, in the up position, and I'm gonna feel for where the keys engage. So right there, I feel the keys are engaged. Now I'm gonna start the bolts in the back. So that's one that's finger tight. And then my second one is here. Start that. Now I'm going to go ahead and use my half inch wrench, tighten those bolts back up. So you notice when I was tightening those bolts, I, I had my hand up on the motor and I was pushing down. The reason I was doing that is because I want to load the keys in the same direction. By that I mean when I'm tightening the bolts, I don't want the, um, the spindle assembly to work through those key clearances and then distort one way or the other because that'll affect the tram of the machine. Um, so by putting my weight here, um, I'm, I'm basically loading the keys in one direction, and then when I tighten those bolts, it stays loaded in that direction, so I, the machine's tram accuracy is maintained. So now that I've got those uh, bolts in the back tight, the next step is to install the button head cap screws um, through the counterboard holes in the top here. So I'll take my 532nd wrench to do that. Oops.
And then the only thing left to do is to reinstall the spindle cover um, in the same order that I took it off in, but in reverse. So I'll go ahead and start on that now. All right, so now with the spindle back on, or spindle cover back on, uh, the machine's ready to run again. Uh, I've got the spindle now in the up position. We'll take a look and just get a visual um, glance at how much uh, clearance I've got between the spindle nose and the table. So we got from this to here, it's about 9.2 inches, and that's, that's a really good amount of work to, uh, um, good amount of uh, clearance to play with, especially when we're doing larger projects and a vise when we have to drill holes. Um, that being said, uh, you know, the key thing with this process, just make sure, you know, to reiterate, you want good cleanliness on that interface. You want to make sure that when you tighten the bolts, you don't um, tilt the spindle back in, in one way or the other to influence the tram error. And then number three, just make sure you get all the bolts tight, um, especially the hex head cap screws that secure the spindle assembly on the bottom and then the button head cap screws that go through um, the front, through those through holes into the Z slide plate. Definitely don't want those bolts to be loose um, during, when you're running the machine, that'll cause issues. So uh, if you have any questions about this video, please uh, reach out to our team, thanks.